Hey, we're talking about Ghostbusters, Frozen Kingdom, uh, Frozen Empire. Up next on Geek Out SA. Do not attempt to adjust your YouTube video. We control the street. <laughs> And welcome back to Geek Out SA. It's Saturday. <laughs> it's Saturday. Uh, yes, and we've, it is it's Saturday. It's been forever since we've been back here. So uh, <laughs> we're back. Uh, we, we've been on hiatus for a while. Uh, took a little break. Uh, went on a little vacation. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, we were yeah. on vacation. And so uh, so I, I flubbed the, the intro. <laughs> I, wasn't gonna, I wasn't going to call you out on it because Kingdom it Empire. It's the it's same thing. Whatever. Thing. Whatever. <laughs> it's frozen. It's cold. Winter's coming. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. So we were gone for a little while. Um, we put a video up on the channel where we went to Mexico and I have more videos coming, but right. I don't think people realize how long it takes to cut video together. Yeah. Um, and so now, we did you know, now, now I'm glad that you know that it takes as long as it does. Yeah, no, it takes forever. Because um, you're like, oh, just cut it. Just do it. I'm like, okay. Well, you know, I'm... Well, I'm, if you're going to do it right, anyway. I'm really good at it, so it's not that. It's just that, you know, I'm a perfectionist. Hey, hey Doug. Doug. How's it going? Hey. Let's see. Um, yeah, so we were in Mexico, so now we're back. Spring break is over. Back mm -hmm. to the old grind and everything. And back to watching movies. And then back to geekdom. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, you love the Hacienda. Yes, thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, you, Doug. Yeah. yeah, it was a really great experience. It was a really great experience. We I, definitely I, I can't need wait to, to go back again. Brush up on our Spanish, especially Colleen. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was great. It was a really great experience. So. Yeah, Colleen kind of like freaked out on me because it takes me like three days before I kind of like get into Spanish, uh, and to I start to I start thinking in Spanish. And then uh, it just, it's a whole game changer. Yeah, because at first we're on a level playing field and mm -hmm. it's not that big of a deal. And then he gets used to it. Done. Boom. <laughs> I, I'm, left in the, I'm left in the dust. Like, I'm done. But um, my vocabulary is just, it's a lot larger than yours because I've been, I've had it for all my life. Right. So. Been exposed to it more. So, but it was interesting. Um, I told him we need to start watching movies and stuff in Spanish, English first, so that I know what's going on yeah. within Spanish, so I can start getting some of it. So. Just watch novellas. This is being, you'll be fine. It's like anime, but like live action mm -hmm. novellas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but we did. We went to the movies, um, and we chose to go see Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went to go see Ghostbusters. We saw. The the one before that, which was with the kids. I don't remember I what it was forget called. The and I forget the name of it. I, I think had, Afterlife. I think so. And I had wanted to re-watch it before we went. I don't know that um, there was a need to watch it. I don't... There I don't wasn't a think, whole lot of... I don't think you need to. There's not a whole lot of reference back. I mean, you do need to know that they're descendants of Egon Spangler, but they mentioned that a few times mm -hmm. in the movie. No, Doug, we watched it in English. The first go around, <laughs> I've got to watch it in English. Um, so you do need to know that they're descendants of Spangler, but again, they mentioned that in the movie um, several right. times in this second movie. So I don't think that it's an integral part to knowing it. No. It, it helps to know where Paul Rudd's character comes in and how he's kind of part of it. Because if you hadn't watched the first one, you would have just kind of assumed that they, like, he was their dad. Um, right. So you might have missed some of that dynamic in the second one where mm -hmm. there's this awkwardness of is he the stepdad, is he not the stepdad, you know, kind of thing. So you might not have understood that. Um, connection. I don't if know. You they hadn't seen the they first tried one. to top bill Paul Rudd in this movie, and I don't think they should have. Well, I mean, I think he just gets. He's he. Of course, he's he's a bigger actor than uh, than the rest of them now. Yeah. But integral to the 
to Ghostbusters? No. No, really, I think that where they were trying to go with this is um, the little girl, and I don't know the actress's name because I never know actors and actresses, but she's Phoebe in the movies. Mm -hmm. um, and she's like the little kid genius, right? Just like Spangler. Hey, Steve! Um, okay, well, we're going to spoil it for you, Steve. Sorry. So if you haven't seen it yet, be forewarned. <laughs> um, I, and, I, and he said he really liked Afterlife. I really liked Afterlife. So I really I liked loved Afterlife, Afterlife. And we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Um, but so I really think top build should have been Phoebe, the little girl actress oh, who yeah. plays Phoebe. Like she is what the movies are about. Right. She's kind of that continuation, that kid genius just like Spangler, that I mean, that's what we right. think of Spangler. Like he's the one that came up with a containment unit. He understands the the photon packs. Like he's the one, right, that does right. all of the more scientific stuff, right? Right. Um, you've got Dan Aykroyd, who is more um, like the historical, and the like lore he's and lore stuff like that, and yeah. stuff like that. Um, Winston is. I don't Winston. know what. Winston is the money guy. He's kind of well, like... now he's the money guy. Yeah, he's Bruce Wayne. I, in the originals, yeah. I don't remember what Winston was just kind of Winston, right? They just hired... He, they needed an extra person. They just hired him on. Yeah. And Bill Murray yeah. is just... He's the kind of... Excuse my French. But he's the kind of douche that you need to kind of round it out right. But you have all these nice guys. Right. And then you have the playboy douche guy who's kind of like going to be the face of the organization and pull in all the you know, views or whatever on the news right. or what you know, and he's going to get you into places and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. Bill Murray is Bill Murray. Right. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, so you kind of, they're not exactly leading us to that dynamic with Phoebe's family um, because everybody's a Spangler. They threw us into that. They... They just threw us into uh, into that dynamic of that they have, which has not kind of been established, per se. Well, and I had even forgotten some of the characters that we see in the second one, like uh, Lucky is the girl. Mm -hmm. And then who's the little nerdy guy that's like Dan Aykroyd's, what was his name? I want to say Pop-Tart, but it's not Pop-Tart. I don't remember what... It was podcast or something. I, I don't remember the other little character's name. Mm -hmm. So he's supposed to be like, I think, the young version of the lore and stuff. And the little girl is supposed to be Winston. Um, and I think, you know, Bill Murray is Bill Murray. I don't think they could find some kid version. Or they could have. They just didn't. Right. Or maybe they were trying to get Phoebe's brother to be him, but he's definitely not. Um if they were and gonna, if they're trying to make it Paul Rudd, that's not Paul Rudd. No, it's not Paul Rudd either. No. Um, in all honesty, if they're gonna cast like a Bill Murray kid, they need the little kid from Stranger Things, the curly-headed kid. No. Oh. <laughs> he could be the Bill Murray. He's like a nerdier Bill Murray, but he could be that. You know, like he's the talker kind of like i could see him doing that. I, I don't know he, he they need somebody with more swagger somebody with swagger right yeah but bill murray had like nerd swagger right mm -hmm. like bill murray thought he had swagger more than he actually had swagger <laughs> like when you see him and you know he's like dana likes him in the movie and everything um but it's i mean i don't know there's something about that original movie that's just like those interactions and he's like he thinks he's rico suave and he's like really kind of derpy and but he's kind of clueless as to what he's doing but then he kind of knows the ghost stuff i don't know he has really good interactions in that and then um rick moranis is yeah. all like <laughs> you know <laughs> that's one one person that i wanted to see because i i knew that rick moranis was thinking about getting back into acting again uh, it would have been nice to see him again. I love Rick Moranis. I would have totally been um, okay with that. That would be an that it would at least have been an awesome cameo. Yeah. Uh, but that's not something that we get in the movie. Because they have the they also have the lady who was like their phone girl, mm -hmm. um, and I forgot her name too. Milnitz is her last yeah. name or whatever, and she even actually gets a Ghostbusters. Is there any suit. any pots? 
yeah, I think that's right. So, mm. um, the actress. So I will say that I think all of that. I kind of like went in a roundabout way because that's what I do. <laughs> I went in a roundabout way to say all of those things that I loved about the original one, mm -hmm. they definitely worked really hard to bring back to this one. Right? They tried they to did. give that back to us. Yes. Um, I think they, they've heard enough that people of our generation we want that connection. We want to reconnect with those. If you're going to give us the new ones, give us that connection to the old ones mm -hmm. and, and don't but just... But what I felt from the from Afterlife was that they were going to pass... That was passing the torch over to the new... And they didn't do that with the second one. No, so that's one of my biggest disappointments in the second one. Mm -hmm. um, because I... I, and, and you too, but I think I liked for a different reason. I liked the new Star Wars movies um, because I felt like it was, you know, Han Solo dies, Leia almost dies, Luke lets go. Like, it's it's that letting go of the old and moving into the new, right? right. And, and that's the way it should be. That's the way everything should progress. Mm -hmm. So, they're... Not that Winston is that old, but come on, Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray are that old. And and the actor that played Spangler, he's already passed away, right? I mean, that's some of the premise of this is right. he's passed away and his family inherits everything. And we get a really powerful deity in this movie as the bad guy. Yeah. So they could have said goodnight. So Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd, and even if Winston doesn't pass away, but he just stays the old money guy. Yeah. You know, I feel like we could have had a more logical sacrifice. Step sacrifice yeah. to let's open this up to the new generation and let's open this up so Ghostbusters can move forward, and we're not always stuck in the '80s trying to recreate what we had in the 80s. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So was that kind of how you felt about it? Yes, yes. Um, one of the cool things which I think, uh, well, before we can get to that, if you haven't seen it, uh, we have the trailer, so let's go ahead and play the queue up one and play the trailer for okay, you. Okay, here we go. For the first time in New York history, a room full of people froze to death in July. It's an unimaginable evil with the power to kill by fear itself. Like literally scared to death? Now it's headed straight for us. Is something trying to get out? Many things. It's commanding an army of the undead. I think we're all going to die. Hold on your ass! This could bring about the end of humankind. Disgusting. So... I don't know if people, well, I know people notice that there's new Proton Packs. There's new Proton Packs on there. And uh, and I think we have a closer view on QOP1 uh, to show what that looks like. QOP1 or QOP2? QOP2. Q uh, okay, if I would stop. <laughs> this is all Spider-Man oh, stuff. Oh, I guess I didn't, I didn't. Push it over. Oh, I downloaded it over here. I did push it over there. Okay. It's but, okay. We but still some Spider Man. <laughs> there, there's, there's new Protons pack, so they look different. Yes. They look a little different. A little bit. Uh, and Phoebe has to do something to one of them, and I, and I won't spoil that for you. Yeah. Um, but you do get to see a look at her knowledge of the, of the Proton packs and right. what she knows that she can do. And she does have to do something. 
Um, which, not that it's going to be much of a spoiler, because I felt like this was another problematic part of one of the newer movies is they lead you too much. In yeah. my opinion. In my opinion, they lead you too much. But um, poor Anakin. He's got allergies, so you hear him scratchy, scratchy, scratching. Um, so go. you go back. I'm sorry. I'll talk about that. And I get on my soapbox. Uh, <laughs> so you go back and talk about what your thoughts were because they showed the trailer. So what your thoughts were on making the sacrifice oh, and yeah. moving on. Don't forget on about our split screen, too. Oh, yeah. I, I forgot. Yeah. Okay. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't remember what. Oh, there. Oh, I did that. Okay. Well, it's been a while since I've done yeah. this. Sorry. Don't, you were saying? So tell us why you thought, like, they missed the mark as far as doing the sacrifice and, and how you thought that could have gone. Well, I, I think they could have at least one of them could have sacrificed themselves and then my mo the one who i thought would have done because the one that didn't want to do uh, the other ones uh was bill murray mm -hmm. he didn't want to keep going on with that unless they had a really good script and that's why he came back for uh he came on as a different character with the uh the female ensemble yeah and, and it felt like they had a little, they had a little um, shout out to them with the little wrist uh, proton, whatever oh, yeah. shooters. Yeah. Well, don't they mention? Isn't there? Um, I thought they did like a timeline. Did, was that in before the movie in Nuvi that they did the timeline or didn't they do it in the movie in the movie where they showed like the iterations of the Ghostbusters now I don't remember it all mingled together for me I know yeah. at some point we saw the iteration and, and the yeah. female group was in there no um, not I don't think no they not on, no that that doesn't it, that's, it's not referenced in either movie oh okay well that's because it was kind of a weird one off yeah. Kinda, it wasn't part of the... And that was the problem I had with that one, but that's a whole nother show. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, if you saw... so you It's saw a different the, universe. Yeah. You yeah. saw in the trailer, so you see all this destruction and damage, which, by the way, you get in the last four minutes of the movie. So that was a little disappointing in and of itself. But mm -hmm. you see all the ghosts come out. You see all of this. The containment unit blows... Um, this deity is there with his horns and everything. So they give us a big enough baddie yeah. that we definitely could have seen that sacrifice of one or more of the Ghostbusters. Or not even a sacrifice. They don't even have to sacrifice themselves. The thi the it's thing just I liked like about in the fight, they could have gone down. The thing I liked about uh, the baddie was that it was... It was a scary bad. There, there wasn't any like comedy with that at all, and that's something that uh, that's one of the things I did like about it. Yeah, I I agree. Um, we get a little bit of Slimer in there. Um, the brother he's playing with, and so that's like cute enough as it is. So Slimer. Uh, what I wish they would do with Slimer, which they still haven't done in live action yet, is make them their friend like he is in the cartoon. Yeah, I and I, I thought that that was where they were leading us in this because I, I really I was wanted hoping that. that. Yeah. I really wanted that because that was one of the things that I used to like in the cartoon mm -hmm. was that Slimer was their buddy and kind of helped him out with stuff. And so... You see him interacting more with the with the guy with the brother. Um, yeah, Garaka's way intimidating. Yes, yes, he is. Yeah. Um, and so I thought that they were going to bring that about too. Like, okay, Slimers befriended them. He's going to do something with them here at the end. 
Yeah. To, you no, know. But no. <laughs> but no. But no. no. So I think they missed the mark on that. That was something they could have, if they wanted to give us um, some kind of fan service that we wanted, those, uh, those of us that are kids of the 80s, if they wanted to do something, that was something that they missed the mark on that they definitely could have done. They did miss the mark on that. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, it, I mean, it's definitely a watch. I didn't, I didn't hate it. No, I didn't hate it. I it wasn't as good as the first one. No. Um, Which that's sorry, that that's hard mind. to do. That's always hard to do. Yeah. That's always hard to do. Sorry, I got. Something but I think in they have so many things that were going against them because you, you you're forced into this dynamic with this family doing the ghost busting. Uh, to where it's not necessarily a team with different that bring different things to the table. Well, I you think know they, what I mean. I think I get what you're trying to say. I think I think they kind of do, and and Phoebe kind of talks about that in the movie because she really kind of bashes her mom and tells her mom like, "Hey, we've all got these skills, and what good are you? Basically, you're a nothing." Um, Yeah, he, <laughs> he hogged up too much. He did. He did. In the cartoon. Well, I don't know. Yeah, that, I think that, you that, that was never have too much slimer. <laughs> <laughs> that was the cutesy part of it. Yeah. Uh, but if they were just to do a little bit of that fan service to us, that would have been cool. Well, I, and I think herein lies the problem. Okay, let's say we're going to get slimer, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the problem that one of the problems that I had with this movie is it seemed like they tried to put too many stories into one movie, right? We have the big baddie, which is great. That's right. really what we want is the big baddie. Mm -hmm. But then we have this kind of coming of age, Phoebe not knowing where she belongs, um, meeting this ghost friend, how this ghost friend is connected, which made absolutely no sense, like how this little girl, I mean, I get, the connection they were trying to make and they were saying like this deity is promising her that she'll go yeah. get to go see her family but they needed to explain more of who that ghost was and well and they gave she us was. little clues and then they just kind of dropped those clues yeah. like they didn't get to fruition um, I, don't, I don't know if that was something that is on the cutting room floor lost in the cut it, it probably is mm -hmm. uh but yeah, that's something I wish I had more background information on. Well, it just, to me, it just seemed like the wrong kind of character to have in this scenario. Mm -hmm. Like I would have been okay with that storyline if it had been maybe a different bad guy. Like it would have been more, I don't know. I guess I feel like because it's an ancient deity and he was trapped such a long time ago, what connection does he have to a more modern ghost? Like, I feel like if we're going to have some connection for him, it should have been a more ancient ghost that maybe connects with Phoebe on a scientific level instead of like a cutesy love interest level. Does that make right. sense? So I, I felt like there was a disconnect between the stories they were trying to tell. Mm -hmm. um, and and then... It, it, it seemed that aspect was pandering. Yeah, seemed really pandery. And then we get the comedic element, which we're supposed to have. It's Ghostbusters. I get it. Mm -hmm. So the Firemaster is the comedic element, right? right? And he's kind of like the Rick Moranis character, um, right? Um, and he's derpy and he doesn't know his role and everything, but then we kind of get enough time with him, but not quite enough time with him. Cause it's kind of like, oh. I think if we were introduced to him in, in afterlife, it would have made more sense. Yeah. Some, I mean, I like the but, way he like took, the, he took his grandma's antique cause mm -hmm. he's trying to make money. And he sells it to Dan Aykroyd. But also, I don't know, maybe I've watched The Fifth Element too many times or something, but if you're the keeper of an ancient evil, 
Like your grandma's just not gonna like make it so that you can be like a stoner guy and not know, you know, a slacker video game stoner guy who doesn't know that you're the keeper of an ancient evil. Like that just didn't fly with me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so I well, felt they like should that have was... showed. They should have showed more about. They should have explained more on that. Mm-hmm. Or like. Like, he's trying so hard and then magically kind of jumps from, like, barely being able to be the fire master to the fire master. But at least maybe if they had given us something of, like, like a two or three second montage of him, like, going back to his childhood and his grandma's, like, teaching him yeah, something. Yeah, that would have been, that would have been good. Like, then he has and, the epiphany. And, and again, that could have been something that was, that's on the floor. That's on the cutting room floor. I, we don't know. Right, we don't know. Because that happens a lot of times is they cut stuff out that would have made, made continuity in the yeah. story that we miss out on. Yeah. So it's and it's those little things, though, that can really change a movie. Mm-hmm. Right. It's those little things that can join the threads together for us or it can just leave because us. Because that's the 80s kids love montages. I do love a mm. montage. I'm even making my students are making a video right now, and I told them that they had to put a <laughs> montage in. <laughs> and some of them didn't even know what that was. <laughs> we had a montage discussion. But, yeah, you have to have a montage. Um, so that was one of my big complaints of the movie, is it felt like they were trying to put too many stories in at once. Right. Like, I really wanted them to focus more on the big baddie. Mm-hmm. I really wanted them to focus more on. Um, it would have made it. It would have made it a completely different movie if they did that, though. But I think that would have been okay. No, I like. I, I kind of like where they had started to go because making uh, making the baddie so bad. I mean. They hadn't dealt with anything like that. I mean, no, and we before. could have had. I mean, we could have had some, for lack of a better thought, we could have had some like Voldemort moments with this guy because he's been trapped for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, although not too long because we see him in the early 1900s, maybe. Right. Which was also kind of confusing. Like, has he been trapped for a long... They act like he's been trapped for a long time, but then he hasn't really been because it's the 1900s. Like, I don't know. That kind of confused me, too, because I was like, well, if he went out and froze everybody, was he only partially trapped then? Or... Because it was only in that one room. Right. And then you see the fire... Now I lost the train of thought of what that character is, but the fire keeper or whatever. You see the person there in the garb that the dude ends up wearing Mm -hmm. at the end. So, I don't know. It it was all just a little disjointed for me. Yeah. Like, some of it just didn't make sense. Like, I was like... And then, what's his name? Oswald, the little guy who they go to at the library or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um... And he tells them about that freezing in the room thing, mm-hmm. um, which we see at the beginning. So that kind of ties it together for us more. But then you're like, oh, well, this deity really hasn't been trapped for that long. Yeah. So I don't know. There were just things about it that I wasn't a fan of. And it was a lot of it was that continuity type stuff and the storytelling. Usually... Dan Aykroyd makes he's usually on the mark I don't know what was different on this one that they didn't do it right yeah I don't know because when when um, when they're in the library except for Ghostbusters do but I mean that was to make money yeah. <laughs> yeah well and when they're when they're in the library right and they're learning about it. Doesn't he show them? He shows them like old, like Sanskrit type type of stuff, right? And they talk about this dead language. Well, going back to the library, I like that he runs into the the same ghost that he runs into in the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that that was a nice. That was a nice nod. Yeah, that, that was a nice nod to the original. 
Yeah. No, they had really good nods to the original. I'm, yeah. I'm not saying that they didn't. I just feel like they tried to give us too many stories. Right. They had a lot of continuity errors because they were trying to give us too many stories. I felt like they tried so hard to give us nods, which they did a really good job at, that they didn't give us enough closure to move on to the next generation of Ghostbusters. Um, and so I think there was just a lot of misses. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna have to agree with you on that. I, but again, not that I hated the movie. I liked the movie. I didn't hate the movie. It just wasn't as good as it could have been. Yeah. And it tends to be kind of lengthy because they're trying to piece too many stories together. Right. So you get kind of caught in limbo with all of these different stories. And then because it's not good storytelling, then what they do is they lead you too much. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the things that I have a problem with in more modern movies. Okay. They're leading you. And I'm sorry, here comes the spoilers. So close your ears la, 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 if you don't want to hear. You know there's a fire master. Mm -hmm. This little ghost that Phoebe's in love with she has this match. She's on fire. She has this match. She's going to have to make the ultimate choice. What is she going to do? The bad guy or the good guys? The bad guy or the good? I mean, come on, dude. It's just like you're leading us. I mean, just talking about it. They talk about it ad infinitum. Like, okay, we get it. We can inference. We don't need you to spell yeah, it how out. Yes. We don't need inferencing. But not everybody... Some people need it spelled out three times. Just like just like Shakespeare would do in his plays. Okay, but I'm gonna get on my teacher soapbox for just a minute. I'm going to tell you that if you don't let people practice, they're not gonna be able to do it. And then you ruin it because a lot of them aren't reading anymore. So their only entertainment is through movies and through shows and through YouTube. So let them inference, please. Okay, I'm off my soapbox. Go ahead, go ahead. But even with that, is it, you're you're de even with you, you're dealing with kids that are GT. It's different. No, I mean that's not my whole career. Is not that they have to learn how to inference. They need to. You need to be able to inference. Yeah, but some people are easily able to inference. But then they're just surprised. They're like, oh my God, I'm surprised. I can't believe that just happened. Woohoo! Okay. Well, but what's <laughs> wrong with that? Well, then those of us who can inference were like, oh, nice. You didn't have to like shove it in our faces uh, a million times. <laughs> I don't know. Um, CG but, anime fan says you could have cut out Lucky and the new scientist character. You could have, but again, I think because they're the teenagers, they're supposed to be the new step in the evolution of the Ghostbusters. Right. So instead of cutting them out, Let's make them more part of the storyline. Right. Let's cut out the girl ghost that's the love interest, right? That let's have the Scooby. Kind of let's have yeah. us a little Scooby gang, right? Of Phoebe, Lucky, the new little nerd kid, right? Yeah. Maybe they're the ones that go do the the research. You know, they meet with Oswald in the library. They're helping him look through books and stuff. Maybe they commiserate with Phoebe and, oh, we have teenage angst or whatever, so she doesn't have to meet this other ghost. Maybe they do research about the fire master, and then the brother helps yeah. the fire master because he's kind of that same, like, derpy... The, the love story would have been okay if it progressed the story. It didn't progress the story. It was just a story within that movie. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that they just didn't need to be in there. No. You could have taken it out and it wouldn't have mattered. Right. And then if you would have given us that connection that she needed to somebody else in Lucky, the the brother barely does anything other than being uh, somebody for slime. Yeah, agreed. They kind of try to bring the brother in because he's the one that like encourages and helps the fire master. But he also didn't have much necessity. Mm -mm. And the mom doesn't have much necessity this no. go around. And Paul Rudd doesn't, doesn't have, have much, much necessity. necessity this go around. Um, so I think this just comes back to our original point when we first started is if you're going 
to move to the next generation, you have to let the past generation go. It's okay to give us some fan service. Yeah. It's okay for us to see them. You know, it's okay for Winston to be old Batman and he's mm -hmm. in the back with the money and he's letting the new generation move on. Yeah. You know, it's okay for Dan Aykroyd maybe to be the crotchety old man that tells you which library to go to or he has connections. And, but he's old and he sends you off and tells you to go and maybe every once in a while he speaks a dead been, language. It would have been cool for... Uh, and then Bill um, Murray's dead. Yeah. <laughs> he sacrifices himself. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. You know, maybe he throws himself in front of a shard or something and like uses his proton pack to distract the deity long enough for Phoebe to do the special thing to her photon pack and the fire master have one more chance to get it right yeah. fire master has his montage he remembers grandma he gets the fireball he and Phoebe do the thing lucky and the nerd kid come and help you know because you need the team to bring the deity down and then boom bish, bish, because bang, you can do up. a montage in like two seconds yeah yeah it doesn't have to be long at all flashes Just, and then boom you're there and then you've got it and then you remember. We should start writing movies. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? I can't even imagine having to write the whole script and do the storyboard and everything. I mean, kudos to all of y'all who are into the industry and do this. I think that it's really great. Um, but I think because you're in the industry and do this, I think you could do better. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know if they need but, to. But then again, what was cut? Right, right. What, was, what cut? was cut? Because there was obviously stuff cut because there was big chops. Yeah. In there, they there was chunks that didn't make any sense. Yeah. Um. I was like, oh, it's too long. Let's chop off this part. No. Yeah. No. That, <laughs> no. Don't chop part. off that part. We need that part and that one over there. We could you bring that one back? Because that just like sense. Batman versus Superman. Yeah. That would make what? so much more sense. <laughs> <laughs> when you see the cut, you're like. Oh my God, why did they even take that out? Yeah. That was the whole continuity that I complained about the whole first time. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering, I haven't looked to see, but I'm wondering if they're going to try to do a third movie in this series. Yeah. Um, they, I feel like they could have done it more easily had they given us more of what we needed um they give us enough of an opening at the end and everything that it looks like they could do a third if they wanted to yeah um and i think the kids are still young enough that if they do it within the next three years or so we could still have a movie and well if, then they'll all be adults at that point yeah which young would adults. be young yeah. adults yeah and they can I, you would think they would have more range at you that point. Think, uh, things that they can do. I mean, I think as far as acting goes, they do a pretty good job. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I didn't not believe them in the characters. Right. And I didn't not believe their dynamic. The characters. Sorry. Because a lot of times I have a problem with that in movies, too, is I don't believe the actors as those characters, or I don't believe the actors when they're acting together in their dynamics. Mm -hmm. um, I believed everybody in their dynamics in this one. You know, Phoebe has the, the intelligence, the angst down. She definitely reminded me of one of my G GT students. Um, the brother is the derpy, derpy brother who's trying to find his way into manhood and stuff. I believe that. Paul Rudd is the awkward uh, guy who's trying to be the stepdad. The mom is the mom, and she's getting flack from all the teens and everything. That, I think that whole family dynamic was very believable, and they played off of each other really well. Um, and then, of course, the original Ghostbusters. I mean, you see Dan Aykroyd for all the two seconds. I, I, mean, I don't get Dan why Aykroyd. the mom was a Ghostbuster. Just to kind of, like, make it a family affair, pretty much. Yeah. That's just, she showed no interest in the first one. No. And then she's just freaked out the whole time in the second one, like, yeah, oh, you're going to get hurt. Don't do that. Don't be in traffic. Like, you know. And then, the, of course, the more she pushes, the more Phoebe pushes back against her, mm -hmm. which is very teenage angsty. But um, Ernie Hudson would be in his 80s by the time that they make another film. However, I could imagine him sticking around because, like Dan Aykroyd, he enjoys being there. 
Yeah. And I think, again... He um, wouldn't He wouldn't have to do much. Right. Again, he wouldn't be doing much. He and Dan Aykroyd wouldn't be doing yeah. much. Like They'd they would be, be the like old Stan men. Lee cameos. Yeah. Almost. They would be the old men in the background, like, you know, giving the money, giving the advice, having the connections. Yeah. It's almost like, I don't know if... Um, CG anime fan if you've seen that movie Red yeah um, with like Bruce Willis and all of uh-huh. them and they're old they're old mm-hmm. um, er um, and so they're kind of trying to come back into their prime but this could be just Ernie Hudson and Dan Aykroyd kind of sitting back you know maybe they're sharing a loft space together or something and the kids are just kind of coming to them or they could, you know, they could be on the technology or whatever talking to them like, you know. Yeah. This is what you need or they could still be there but just in a minor role. Right. And again, they could have just um they could have passed the torch better. They tried to put them in there and be like, "Oh yeah, we can still be ghostbusters." You can't. Okay? You can't. <laughs> I can't imagine the strength that it would take to need to do yeah. like a real photon, like in real, you know, if it was for real, you know. Um, and the agility that you need in order to like get the trap out There's and There's no stuff. more combining streams for them. No. And that wasn't an even thing that they tried on this one. Yeah. And, and that would have, I wish they had tried that and it didn't work. That would have showed that 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 was that deity was way too powerful. Yeah, and uh, CG anime fan agrees with you, Vince. Uh, said that they would like it if they could convince Rick Moranis to come out of retirement for a sequel. We would have loved that too. We really wanted to see him this time. Yeah, um, that would have been really great. So if he could be in the next one, um, that would be really great. Like maybe there's a some side connection to Zool or something. I mean, that would be that would be a cute kind of wrap up where mm-hmm. there's some way to bring that back. I did like the little um the little the little Stay Puff marshmallow guys <laughs> are freaking hilarious. Like at one point they're in the car and one of them is burning his own face with the cigarette lighter and they're all like laughing and stuff. They're super cute. It it reminds me of Evil Dead too. Yes, yes, they're <laughs> adorable. Like that was a good nod. That I enjoyed. I laughed at that. Yeah. And there's another really. I thought they did really well with the ghosts because there's another good uh, entity ghost thing called the possessor, and it can possess inanimate mm-hmm. objects. And so they do a really good job of that because it bounces from one yeah. inanimate object to the next. And so you know, first you're getting attacked by like the remote control and then a slice of pizza and then a flamethrower like it's it's just kind of all over the place um but it's really cute um that they did that dynamic and they thought of that and they gave us that because it's almost that possession type Mm -hmm ghost that we think of when we often think of ghosts. Yeah, CG Anime Fan says Rick Moranis' character became a Ghostbuster at the end. Of, yes, he did co- yeah. become a uh, Ghostbuster, so it's weird that he hasn't been mentioned uh, in the new films. It's because he just, he he doesn't want to act anymore. Yeah. But they could have, I mean, they do a nod to Egon, so they could have said something about him. Like, oh, maybe he's gone off and done this or whatever. Uh, and yeah, but he wrote the original one, <laughs> yeah. the original screenplay. Yeah, but we love Rick Moranis. Like, <laughs> how can you not, you know? <laughs> yeah, but no, I, I I really do think they should have done something with him. Yeah. So overall, what we're trying to tell you is it's worth a watch. Yeah. I don't know if it's worth a theater watch. We like the theater, so mm-hmm. it's a little bit different. Um We'll watch it for you so you don't have to. Yeah. I I definitely think... We'll tell you, it, it's definitely a stream movie. Yeah, if we weren't watching it to, like, research it for the show so that we could have material for the show. Unless you're into into Ghostbusters big time. If you, if you want to see the, ghost, uh, the proton packs closely, go see it. Because a uh, professor goes, should have... Possess Phoebe. But I think the possessor ghost could only possess inanimate objects. 
I don't yeah. think it could have possessed Phoebe um, to get her to do that. But could have like, that would have been a cute kind of comedy of errors type thing where the possessor ghost is like possessing things like on the way in front of her and then maybe like knocks her into something so that she does something or whatever to let it out. I mean, that kind of could have been a funny way yeah. they could have done that. Uh, CG Anime says, I love the film, but um, I know that it was somewhat of a hot take. Yeah. Um, I, and I didn't, I didn't love it. I loved the first one that they have. And, yeah. I, and I, loved where I, I loved where it felt like they were trying to go with this one and where they could have gone with this one. Because I just didn't love that I, they I didn't get there. I don't know if I had said it before is because they passed the torch in Afterlife. Seemed like it. That's what the, that's what was supposed to have passed the torch to them. So they should have had a way lesser role in the second one. Yeah, so it makes you wonder did people complain after the first one? That, oh, we didn't get enough. Like, oh, we got all those chick Ghostbusters and now we get these kid Ghostbusters. Because you know people complained. So I don't know if people complained enough that then they were like, oh, well, let's shove the Ghostbusters in this sequel and then maybe people will love it. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 think, pe uh, I think filmmakers just need to start making their films again and stop worrying about a small subsection of people that want certain things in there. Yeah. It's hard. You get you get trounced on yeah. media, so. But that was it. That was Ghostbusters, uh Frozen Empire. Uh like I said, I liked it. Uh I I like going to watch it at the theater. Uh, uh if it if it's my suggestion, uh wait till it comes out streaming. Yeah. Um Unless you like the theater, or unless you want to see the new Proton Packs closely. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed it, but I wouldn't, if we hadn't, like, I would have wanted to see it, but now that I've seen it. Unfortunately, there wasn't a lot of people. There, there was two other people in the theater when we were in there. I know, and we saw it, like, opening day. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's a shame, because I think they really could have had a hit with this and I don't know where they missed along the way to not get the people to come watch it but it really could have been I don't know good. that they advertised it as well maybe not maybe not. yeah or nowadays I think they're just having to release it in the theaters for a little bit just so it can go to streaming yeah I think our poor theaters are gonna die yeah I'm gonna be so unfortunately sad. I'm gonna be so sad <laughs> But that, uh, again that was another great episode I had a lot of fun talking about Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Um, if you haven't subscribed to us, please subscribe to us and uh, hit that notification bell so the next time we go live, you'll know. Uh, but thanks for checking us out. I'm Vince. I'm Colleen. Geek, Geek out, out SA. I don't know where button is. Oh, here it is.